Hey yo, subscribe to my new video game channel, Brooklyn Arcade. You heard? Playing crack era games only. Make sure y'all browsing that channel in the right way. We up to 54,000 subscribers. I still got that good Millie Goat with the bro squeak, 1.4 million views. Go to that recent and new episodes playlist. This is on here by mistake. This is a video my dude John Dilly showed me. I gotta finish watching that because it's crazy. You heard, this is my other channels looking heavily nervous. My Brooklyn Arcade is moving though. You heard, y'all gotta subscribe to my other channels. You heard, stop having me out here looking crazy. Go to that All Lads playlist if you wanna watch All Lads stories. Go to that All Rikers Island Legends playlist. Go to that All Brooklyn Legacy playlist. The All Murder stories, you feel me? videos with a hundred thousand views and better that playlist is starting to get real chunky the all saquon playlist you heard new york state prison is different playlist when chasing your eggplant goes wrong playlist i need y'all to be tuned into the channel the correct way you heard so when you want here make sure you don't miss about 50 60 episodes that you you think you saw everything but it's about 50 60 episodes you ain't seen you heard out of this 400 because i got about 400 got about 400 uploads you heard z boy a dude was hanging up and he said yo he hang up we gotta hang up so i run down there me and majesty go in the cell the, the dude is hanging from the light post so back then we had this bullshitted hook knife hook knife ain't working Cut the nigga down with a shank. Fuck one with these cats. Boom. Next thing I know, we saved this nigga life. He came up with a, a, a report saying that me and Majesty tried to kill an inmate in his cell. And don't think niggas don't get fucked in jail. Niggas get fucked in jail. Niggas has got fucked in jail. That's another nightmare. You mean on Riker? You mean on Riker's Island? Yeah. Yeah, son. In the Bing? Or you just talking about no, on Riker's Riker Island? Riker's Island, period. Riker's Island, period. Like it be reports of it be reports of niggas that say, "Yo, nigga, 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 knock me out and fuck me" type shit. Yo. This situation was no knock me out, fuck me type shit. It was knock me out, lay you on the bed, tie you up, and yo, it got reported, but I, yo son, I came in one night, my, my, my cousin was locked up. So I came in to see him. He was in one of the malls. I, I'll never forget it was on a midnight tour. And I went to go see him. And like on a midnight tour and on the Mars, they got about, say, give them, take 60, 60 niggas in there. All lights was out. I go down there to visit him, make sure he all right. He got his crew all sitting in the back with the lights out. So he said, yo, cuz. I said, what's up, fam? said, I don't think you want to come back here right now. I said, what the fuck you talking about, nigga? And, uh, and these are adults. And all I hear them laughing. So, I, man, I walk back there. And while I'm walking back there, I see this bed moving in motion. Move in motion? What the fuck? Next thing you know, you hear, mm, mm, mm. I said, oh, shit. And them niggas are laughing. So I go back and see... My cousin, he said, I told you you won't be here right now. So, so. I said, yo, man, I'm out of here. Y'all niggas bugging. I walk out. When I'm walking out, the seals is in the bubble chilling. Like, they don't know what the fuck. I said, yo, son, y'all got all those lights out. There's somebody back there getting fucked. They were like, yo, here, no don't play. Yo, son, let me out before you hit those bells. No, no, stay with us, stay with us. No, because I don't belong here, nigga. Let me out. So they opened the door and let me out. Them niggas hit the bell before I got out. 
So when I got out, the bell start ringing. Squad come running. Come to sign out. When they pull the cover off, another nigga was fucking another nigga in the ass. Had him tied, all tied. The nigga that was fucking the other nigga in the ass, he had over 25 years. So when they got him, he said, oh, okay, they handcuffed the nigga. And he did, he's screaming. The nigga that they took the mouthpiece off, you know, the um, pillowcase off of the mouth and all, I ain't no fucking faggot. What are you doing? He said, you a faggot now, motherfucker. You know, and these are grown men. But let me tell you something. There's a twist to this story. He did that to him, right? But check it out. When they went up north, our homeboy killed him. Mm. Yep, homeboy that got fucked in the ass, he killed the dude that fucked him. That's right. He caught him. He killed that nigga. That's right. That's right. Yo. Real talk, real talk, bro. Crazy. Yo. Crazy, son. Crazy, son. Yo, son, I, yo, son, come on. You are a whole you movie. Got, I mean, you know, vaguely, like Uptown, Rambo. I mean, I can't name every fucking body. But they all was my motherfucking dogs. And they would tell you, Bushwick from Bushwick, I don't know if you ever did a story about him. He was a motherfucker. That was my, it was a lot of niggas, uh, Gucci. Oh, I can't, I can't even name them all. I don't wanna, I don't wanna leave nobody out, you know. No, going away about my Queens niggas out there, you know. Uh, uh, remember Alpo, I had every fucking body. Everybody you think that was somebody I had. You know Rackers Island is a jail. That's why when I'm in Brownsville, niggas used to be in front of Rockaway Avenue Pizza Shop telling stories, and I pull up. They like, nigga boy, he gonna eat right now. Be 50 deep in front of the pizza shop. A nigga telling them, yo, I ran Rackers Island. I ran this, I ran that. They said, you did? They said, all right, we gonna find out. They don't say that. They said, don't worry, he gonna be pulling up soon. I pull up, they said, yo, come here. I go on, yo, what up, what up? Give everybody love. They look at the dude, they say, yo, you know this nigga, right? Nigga looked at me some, right? They say, yo, you know this nigga? I don't know that nigga. They say, yo, he told me he ran Rackers Island. I said, you ran what? I said, wait, yeah, yo, you know C-70? They just start laughing. C-74, nigga, that's where I met, been for forever. You ain't never come in my bean, nigga. Oh, no, that must be when, uh, when are not, yo, they ran that nigga out of Brownsville, man. Get the fuck out of here, you liar. They was kicking that nigga all the way down motherfucking New Lots Avenue. Get out of here, you lying motherfucker. But no, uh, maybe he was on vacation. Get the fuck out of here, nigga. Nigga telling fake war stories and shit. Fuck out of here. <laughs> the way they say your name and the way your name is really spelled is two different things, right? Dudes be calling you E-Born. Yeah, I know. Just call me E-Born because that's what they know me as. You know, the, the, the inmates, they love E-Born. They gave a twist to my name. My name is E-Born, but when they say E-Born, that's up north and everything. Yo, E-Born, E-Born. Even out here when I'm home. Yo, E-Born. Yo, e they, they left the E out like, fuck it. That's what it is. That's what it is. But I'm going to tell you something funny. And I know what you show a lot of inmates going to laugh. They gonna say that's the truth. They used to say, "Yo," and they didn't know, cause I like to creep. I like to creep up on them while they in a cell, cause it be too quiet. So I just creep up on them and see what they doing. And we had this imam. He was an imam, and they had, you know, this is a jail house. And, you know, they got a habit of putting towels up on their gate. So you can't see in their cell what they're doing. And that used to hurt me because when you put a towel up, I don't know that you're trying to commit suicide. We had a lot of inmates try to kill themselves, son. You know, and that's a true story. And if you ain't on your job, they will succeed and kill themselves. Hmm. You know? Yes, they will. So on my watch, everybody gonna be right. I'm gonna make sure. If one of them depressed, son, 
I will crack this cell, sit in the cell with them on their bed, and we'll talk. The captains and deputy like, yo, where he born? Yo, he's somewhere down there in one of those cells. Then come down, walk, and they'll see me and the inmate sitting on the bed. I like, yo, cat, what up, man? You see, yo, everything good, yeah, everything good, cat. Go ahead, make this tour, man. I sit down and talk with him. Hmm. I sit down and talk with him, and your son. And what I'm trying to tell you, by them putting towels up, one day, they served pork chops. <laughs> now, you know, <laughs> I got the, they not the pork be eating pork chops. What? Yo, son, the emo, the emo. I poked his cell. He had the towel cover his cell. I looked at his cell. I can tell the story now because I'm retired. And I'm sure he's somewhere else. I don't know where my nigga at. He here, he gonna start laughing. And he'll say that he don't want nobody know he is. Yo, I poked the towel down. That nigga eating the fuck out that pork chop. Eating the fuck out that pork chop. To the bone. I watched this nigga. And I said, I said, oh. You don't eat pork, huh, motherfucker? <laughs> yo, that nigga, Steve, yo, he ran to the gate. He said, you want to breathe, you want to breathe, breathe, breathe. Don't say it too loud. They're going to kill me. <laughs> yo, I just looked at him. I was laughing. Like, <laughs> I still wasn't going really to blow you up, nigga. But you was sucking the fuck out that pork down, nigga. <laughs> he said, yo, I was hungry, man. I'm like, all right, all right don't worry. He said, hey, please don't tell him. You got it. <laughs> I never told nobody till today, nigga. <laughs> Oh God! I was laughing my ass off when that was uh, <laughs> no bullshit, man. That was no bullshit, son. No bullshit, man. And see, that's only the tip, man. That's why I said, "I mean, you gotta get to get we, you, you shoot." Once I get my names together, because I'm looking at your video, and they know they was with me, because like I got tell you, I had the worst of the worst. Yeah, and I want to tell everybody from my being, y'all know I love y'all brothers. Ain't nothing changed. Don't ever forget, you need me, I'm there. Remember our theme song, DMX, all this, all the DMX, yo, when DMX came on, the being went crazy. Because back then they had Walkman. So they was letting everybody have their Walkmans in the Bing? No, only some of the niggas. But once some of the niggas sing it, everybody know. Everybody know. Because back then, you, you're not supposed to have Walkmans in the bean. You're not supposed to have commissary in the bean. You feel what I'm saying? There's certain shit you're not supposed to have. But if I'm not walking and somebody comes in and they don't search them right, they in there. They got it. And they have it until the search team come and take it and put it in their locker. And then something else will happen, and they get it out their locker. And you know, it was always a way for them to get something. But yo, I'm telling you, DMX ruled the fucking jail. <laughs> yo, I, I was sorry when he died, son. It hurt me. It hurt my heart because, like you said, that's just like they taking Rockets out in a way. Cause DMX ain't here, but. Up till today, I'm still rocking DMX shit. They got one, um, I can't recall it. It say, see, see, you ain't whoa. Remember that one? Whoa, whoa. They liked it, that one. Whoa, remember that one? Yeah, Black Rob. Yeah. See, you ain't whoa. Yo, they, got, they had me laughing. They whoa, whoa. Yo, they love that shit. And I said, you hear that shit all across the island. Shit echoing through the island, son. To the Allen, son. They'll tell you something for real, man. For real. Sometimes I come in the morning and the death be waiting for me to come in. And boy, I'll be looking at him. He said, I'm so glad you're here. I said, what? He said, they've been blowing it down all night. Setting fires all night. Setting fires all night, son. I go in my bean. That shit all flooded. Smoke. Fire prints everywhere. I'm like, yo, what happened? Yo, E, we set it off last night, nigga. They have some old fucked up CO down here. Yep. 
Yo. <laughs> Yo, son. I'm telling you. That was my second home. That was, they, they had to run me out, man. Check that white debt. Man, me out trying to get me. Trying to get me. Yeah. Trying to get He's the only reason why I left, son. Because he, he was trying to trying to do me dirty. Uh, the shit that really hurt my heart was when this depth, the member of the depth, I told you that got shut it down. Mm -hmm. Majesty, he got over 25 years. He's in sentencing now. He, me and him still talk. I'm waiting for him to let him go. I hope they let him go. Man. We'll see what happens. But I still talk to his moms on the phone. But um, I had him as my suicide aide. And a, a dude was hanging up. And he said, yo, he hang up, we gotta hang up. So I run down there, me and Majesty go in the cell. We cut, we go in there. The, the dude is hanging from the light post. It's a, a light lamp, like. And he got it connected to this gate, a vent gate that they got in their cell. So back then we had this bullshitted hook knife. Hook knife ain't working. Cut the nigga down with a shank. Fuck one with these cats. Boom. Next thing I know, we saved this nigga life. I hurt my arm. Cause yo son, I was about, let me see. Uh, the light is all the way up. Yo, I fell a, a nice fall, son. Say a half a second floor to the floor. Mm. That's how I fell. When I fell, I hurt my shoulder. So when I hurt my shoulder, I went out on my shoulder. He came up with a, a, a report saying that me and Majesty tried to kill an inmate in his cell. He doctored a video of me and Majesty going in the cell and never coming out. And try to press charges saying that me and Majesty tried to kill the dude. That same, that same white captain? That same white, he's a death. The same white death. Now check it. Now I'm here, yo. They trying to take your job. You got to go down to earth, to oath. They said you and Majesty Try to kill a nigga. I'm like, what? Yo, it was real. Cause I already, my time was right there. All right, this shit is real now. They get, he getting real funky. You know, they they taking it all the way downtown. So they coming for my head. So you know what I did? Every inmate that was on that tier, they was there. They saw what happened. Cause you could look from cell to cell. If you're across one cell, you can look at another cell. I got a statement from all of them. And you know, Majesty, thank God for him. He helped me think of it. He said, yo, we're going to get a statement from all the inmates. All right? And we're going to get it notarized and everything. And then when it, they took them to the clinic, the inmate, when we took them to the clinic, the inmate in front of the doctor said, yo, Ebon, thank you for saving my life. Never thinking that that was going to come back to help. He said it in front of the doctor. So when I went down to the clinic and I told the doctor what they was doing, the doctor said, I was right here. When the inmate said, you and Majesty, y'all saved his life. I said, could you put that on paper? He said, sure I can. He put that on paper. I got that notarized. And then I went to get notarized. The inmate that we saved his life, I had a day off. You know what they did, right? You hear me? Yeah, I'm listening. You know what these motherfuckers, that motherfucker cracker did? He moved, he moved the inmate out to jail. He moved the inmate out to jail so I couldn't get a statement from the inmate. Mm. He sent the nigga like, what they say he went, he went to some other jail he went to. I think North Facility, he, he went somewhere. He shipped them. So now I got the doctor's report. I got the Bing report from all the inmates. All I needed was his. 
and they shipped them out the building. But I'm gonna show you how much love is thrown around in there for me, son. When that shit went around C-74, what they was trying to do to me, you know what these brothers did for me? Yeah. They sent the kite to every jail on the island telling them what they was trying to do to me. Don't you know the guy, the, it got back to the guy in the other jail, the other jail, he sent a, 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 kite, a, a letter back to my jail to one of the inmates and Joe E, yeah, this is what you need. Now just get it notarized. Yo son, I went and got it notarized. Went down there to oath. Yo, they had me guilty already. I had my, I went down there with my suit, my folder, I had my lady with me. And the, the president of corrections of Seabrook was there. Everybody was there. And they they, they put me in a room with like, let me see, about 16 white motherfuckers. Like on a long table. I'm going in the room, they got this big screen, and it, all it says, all right, you wanna plead guilty now? I said, what? You wanna plead guilty now? Cause we got you dead to right. Oh, you got me dead to right? And I'm looking at, I get a phone call on my phone. While I'm there, I said, excuse me for a minute. Yo, it's another death from C-74. He said, he's wrong. They're trying to set you up. He said, but I got something for you. I said, what? He said, you know in the beam where the cameras have hours, minutes, and seconds? I said, yeah. He said, they set you up. They try, The tape that they got don't have hours, minutes, and seconds on it. That's gonna dead it. Make sure when they show you that video, you hit them. And a dad told me that. While you was at the hearing, he told you that? Yeah. That's crazy. Your son, his name is Deb Andrews. He's my, I love him to death. He said they trying to set you up. Your son, when I got in there, I already had my paperwork, but that was the icing on the cake. Cause I just waited. They said, we got the video and anything. I said, you got video and anything? Say, yeah. I said, okay. I said, before I see the video, let me show you what I got. Let me show you what you got, what you got. So son, I had a set of 24 copies of everything, of the inmate statement, the inmate, inmate statement that they said I tried to kill, the doctor's report, the doctor's statement. Yo, so son, I, went, I felt like I was a CEO giving out to my workers. I was passing the folders around, <laughs> passing around. I said, don't open it. They looking at me, I'm like, don't open it. Don't open it, what I do? Seaport looking at me, smiling. Seaport, the president, he said, that's my man right there. I said, don't open it. I waited. So he said, wait, wait, throw it up. Don't open it till I tell you. You say you got me, don't open it. I waited till the last white man got his, I said, now open it. They open it, your son. You should have saw the confused, the confusedness of all them crackers' face. They looked at it and said, what's this? What's this? I said, the same way you all do your investigation, I did mine. That's it. That's the inmate statements. The inmate statement that you said I tried to kill. I said, that's the doctor's report. And that's all of that is notarized. I said, now what? And they looked at me. And they said, how you get that? How you get the doctor's report? I said, you listen, y'all did your investigation and I did my own too. I said, now let me see the video. Now I was open off the video that Deb just called. They put the video on. Guess what, lad? No hours, no minutes, no seconds. And you see a slice when nigga like sliced the tape. I said, y'all motherfuckers done lost your mind. They like, wait, wait, wait. I had my lady with me. She was looking. I said, you see that film you showed me? Put it back on. They put it back on. I said, I want the pain. Where's the hours, 
minutes and seconds on this video. Yo, they all look so fucking stupid. Seabrook, the president of corrections, start clapping his hands, saying, that's my man. That's my man. All the crackers closed their motherfucking photos that I gave them. They stood up and said, yo, let's get out of here. They said, saying, what kind of shit is this? But you know what? I tried to press charges, and I couldn't get nobody to take my case. I wanted a defamation of character. Hell yeah. You had a super case. Millions. Niggas, Thank what? you. That's crazy. That shit is crazy, bro. Nobody wanted to take the case. Oh, don't worry. You're going to win. You gonna, I don't want to win. I don't want to win this way, nigga. That's crazy, bro. Yeah, man. That's, that's, that's a whole movie. Let me save this Paul up. Dead Belly, he's another cool brother, you know. He came to me and said, yo, we getting ready to leave. He said, Rackers Island is changing. There's a new regime coming. I had a front gate pad, son. I parked, I parked in front of the jail with the warrant. That's how my shit was. I parked in front where all of them got to park in the parking lot. I was in the bing so long. They like, yo, nigga, no, you you park with us, nigga. You, you want to keep this jail in check. I parked there with all the warrants. Right in front of the jail. But the president told me, he said, yo, E, he said, it's fucked up how they try to get you. He said, but listen, you made him look so bad. It ain't over. He gonna try to come back again. I said, you know what? I ain't got time for this. Cause they was already taking the officer's job for bullshit. I already did two years over my time. But between me and you, I wasn't ready to go. I wasn't. But I left because they stooped that low to try to put me out on the street without a pension and put me on my ass. You know what I mean? And like the uh, Warren Robinson said, and uh, the President Seabrook, he said, yo, don't let them do it to you, son. You got your time in, you ain't got nothing to prove no more. You did your job. And yo, that's when I went and put my papers in, man. I put my papers in. But I wasn't ready to leave, though. But I left because of that. And that same white man, while I'm leaving, I'm walking through the hall, Delph's in the hall, he yelling at him, stop right there, don't go nowhere. I'm walking, about 25 adults walking with me. Fuck you, nigga. Yo, who y'all talking to? You, you punk ass, white cracker. And they walk with me. Once I dipped in the bean, they dipped in the bean with me, he ran behind them. Who that officer? Why is he listening to him and not me? That's too much power for a black officer to have. He said that, son. He actually said that? He said that. That hit me like a fucking machete in my motherfucking heart. That's when I knew I had to leave. But I I, I said I bet I never see that nigga, man. I, I man, yo, I heard that nigga living out there. That he better stay his fucking ass out there. He hired it, that's why he... Oh, he, he's off the job, he retired right after that too? Yeah, yeah, yeah. My man, my man go to all the time, my partner. He said, yo, I saw that nigga, nigga living in a gated community. You better, motherfucker, cause I better not see your ass. Motherfucker. <laughs> And I had funds in them niggas with me. They used to run with the fat boys and shit. Yeah. And one of them still be out there in Eastern Yo. Cause like I gotta tell you, I, I'm in the community. I'm 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 in them everywhere. That's why we said, oh, they got you mixed up in Eastern York. I'm Eastern York, Cypress, Best Style, Queens, Manhattan, Harlem. I'm every motherfucker. I'm like sidewalk fair. I'm everywhere. You know what I'm saying? Cause that that's where my people at. My people everywhere, so I always say, hey, where you from is where you at, nigga. 
Hey, you remember Eric B? Hey, where you from? This is where you at. He's right. That's the fact. With Tut, my my heart, that's my heart. He had uh beef with this nigga named Big Mo. And it wasn't really a beef, it was like a misunderstanding. Some type of he say this, that, this, that. So this is what me and Tut was hanging. I was out there in Lindu. So I see him and we talking. Someone you tell, what's up, Mason, man? I got this beef, man. What beef you got? The stool named Mo. I said, Mo? Yeah, Big Mo. I said, Big Mo? For what? Pick him? Yeah, yo, that's my, man, that's my family. He said, what? I said, yeah. He said, yo, I need you to talk to this brother, man, because I can't cross on that side without having my, you know, my thing. It's going to be problems. You know, so I'm like, yo, I'm going to call him right now. I call Big Mo. Yo, Mo, what up? What up, man? Yo, yo. Yo, I got Tuck with me right now. He said, what? You got who with you? You got Tuck with me right now. He telling me y'all got some kind of, yo, don't, yo, yo, I'm telling him I'm going to get, yo, hold up. Don't say nothing. What's the problem? Yo, man, it's war on sight. He already know when we see Tuck. I said, he ain't no war on sight. I said, because you my family, he my family. And he ain't going down like that. What you talking about? Yo, I'm coming over there. You coming over where? I'm coming to the shop. Now, Mo got a shop, an auto shop over there on Pickett Avenue. I said, I got a tug with me. I got my, my lady with me and her kids. Her little brother. He said, yo, man, your cousin, I'm telling you, you know that nigga be scrapped the whole time. Yo, don't worry. Nothing's going to happen. So I tell Tut the same thing. Tut like, yo, you. I said, Tut, you scrap, I'm scrap, he scrap. Ain't nothing gonna happen. You my family, Mo my family. We run together. Yo, come on. I said, you think I'm gonna bring the girl with me, Kalei with me into this a fucked up situation? And we got a little kid? Come on, man. Try to get in my Jeep with me. We ride out there, picking the Avenue. I pull up to the shop. This fucking mo. Now look, the shop is always lit up, okay? Lights. You know, when we pull up, all the lights is out. In my mind, I'm like, nah, this is some bullshit. So Tut even caught on. Tut said, look, man, all the lights is out. I said, Tut, don't worry about it. In my mind, I'm like, see, this is, this is some bullshit. I said, Tut, stay close to me, come on. Ain't nothing gonna happen, Tut. Tut, like, he got his hand on his shit in his bag. You know, I'm not even sweating because I already know. I said, come on, I said, you stay close to me. Ain't nothing happening. You a killer, he a killer, I'm a killer. We all killers. So, come on. We walk to the shop, lights out, the gate is open. I said, yo, Mo, stop playing, cut the lights on. Mo said, Yo, but I said, cut the lights on. He cuts the lights on. When he cut the lights on, son, Mo got a fucking goon squad up in there. He got a goon squad up in there. I'm talking about at least 15, 20 niggas in there laying in the cut. I said, yo, Mo, ain't no need for all that. You ain't gonna need none of this. So Mo, come on out. Tuck, come right here with me. And I said, yo, y'all talk. I'm not right here. And there was some beef with some niggas from Cypress said something and, you know, some bullshit. And, all right, so these, these squads, I said, yo, all your niggas hugging and, yo, okay, okay. So before I leave, Mo said, yo, Tut. Tut said, yeah. He said, look up, at, look up at the top of the building. Yo, son, we look up at the top of the building. Big Mo got niggas lined up on top of the buildings with guns, rifles, all kinds of shit. He said, if shit went down, you wasn't getting out. I was like, Tell looked at me, I looked at him. I said, yo, y'all stupid, man. I said, come on, Ty. Ty got back in the Jeep with me, and I drove him back home, son. But yeah, man, that was a story for your ass, kid. That's real talk. Real talk. I love that nigga Tut, boy. He was all right, man. He was all right. 
You know, everybody go through their ups and downs, fam. Everybody going up and down, man. You know, I, I was just one of the lucky ones. When I was out there, I never got caught. I guess because my mother was praying for me 24 hours. 24 hours, because I've I been through the worst of the worst. I had guns pulled at me, and the nigga pulled the trigger, and the gun broke in half. Mm. The gun broke, son. That was nothing but God. And that was nothing but the ass of whooping of God I had to give him. <laughs> but see, and he was a junkie, though. And that, that's what's crazy. I was on the elevator. And he pulled the gun, son. And like I said, I was heavy. But he was a junkie. But you couldn't tell at the time because he had a hoodie on. And then after I got busy with his ass, I got to see his face. No bullshit. About three weeks later, I'm on a basketball court shooting. The same dude come. Pass me the ball. I pass him the ball. It's the same nigga that was going to kill me that the gun broke in the ass. And he didn't even know it was me. And I'm looking at this nigga shooting basketball with him. I'm like, ain't this some shit? He don't even remember. Because he was so fucked up high on that shit. <laughs> Ain't that some shit? Crazy. I got one for you, ass. Oh, this gonna tear the roof off the motherfucker. <laughs> My partner, Davis. He ran a uh, lower dorm. Now, like I tell you, I'm from the streets. I keep my ear to the streets, my head to the streets. You know, I'm like that movie, uh, Buster, uh, Buster Ryan had played in, um, what's that movie I like? That movie Shaft? Yeah. That Puerto Rican, that Puerto Rican brother, I love the one, how you say, one, one family, I don't know how to break it down, but that's me all the way. Well, he was telling one love, one family, I got family everywhere, but that, that's me right there. And I saved this officer from getting, getting killed, son. Getting killed right there in Linden Houses. And this side went down. Three o'clock in the morning, I'm in the bed, sleep. Knock the fuck out, my phone ringing. I'm like, three o'clock in the morning, oh man, should I pick up this shit? You know, them late phone calls ain't no joke. I'm oh, like, fuck it. I pick it up. My family on the other end of the line. Yo, don't say nothing, don't say, shut the fuck up, shut the fuck up. Kill that nigga, shoot that nigga right now. I'm like, yo, what, what the fuck? What's going on? I'm like, yo, what's up, family? Yo, we got this, he said, we got this guy came to cop some shit for somebody and he got a shield. He got a shield. Yeah. And we was getting ready to blow his head off and throw him off the roof. And he said, while we was dragging him, he noticed my cousin. He said, no, no, wait, I know your family. Your family. And the way my cousin knew it was me, he called me by my last name, Estella Leroy. He said, Ebon, Ebon, my partner, Ebon. And then he stopped it. He stopped the niggas and everything. Hold up, hold up. Ebon, you know Ebon. What? So they held up. And that's what they told me. They said, listen, what you say is going to matter this guy's faith. So make sure you say the right thing. Cause them niggas in Linden, they was doing their thing at the time. They said, so make sure, so they said, do you know a guy named Davis? I was like, the officer named Davis? I was like, uh-uh. You know, I'm not thinking this guy because this guy's a good guy, you know? Davis, I'm like, um, I don't, he said, Dougie, it's me, he born Dougie, talk screaming. And when he said it, I recognized the voice, and I said, wait a minute, Davis, Dougie? And then my nephew said, you know him? I said, yeah, that's my partner. I said, don't do nothing to him. He said, don't worry, we got this. And they said, click. And I was nervous the whole night. And then my nephew, my neighbor, my, my nephew called me back and said, don't worry. He said, what happened was they came to cop a lot of shit. And the officer that was with him, Davis, he didn't know that his cousin came near the cop shit. 
His cousin never told him he was going in the building to cop a lot of shit. And, you know, they got searched when they went in there. They wasn't expecting that, and they caught him with the chill. But Dale Ray had him handcuffed, and they was getting ready to gag, gag him and throw him off the roof. 14 story, son. 14 story, real story. And when David saw me, the next day I got to work, your son, the nigga, kissed the ground. And he hugged me, he said, thank you. I wouldn't have been here. I said, motherfucker, why is you over there anyway? He said, my nephew didn't tell me he was going to cop no stuff from these people. I'm the reason why he's alive today. Officer Davis, yes. That's crazy. What if you what if you wouldn't have picked up that phone? That's what I'm he would have been gone, bitch. He would have been gone. He would have been gone. That's crazy. I think about it all the time. He been gone. I still talk to the officer today. He won't let a week go by, he don't call me. Cause he said I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for you. Crazy. If it wasn't for you, I wouldn't be here. 